I'm Nate, this is my channel, and I do car stuff. A few minutes later. Three hours later. I need new seats. What is up car people of the interweb? Thanks for checking out my channel and if you couldn't tell by the intro today's video is all about new seats. I bought my JZX81 with some mods already done to it none of which I am too stoked on so I'll be fixing things and replacing things as I go but where I wanted to start was the seats. Uh, the previous owner installed the small size energy Prisma in the driver's side of the car and it is just not comfortable for me. I am a pretty big person for reference. I am about six feet tall and about 205 to 210 pounds with a pretty decent sized butt. And my big butt does not fit in that tiny little seat. Bad guy in a little go. On top of that, the previous owner used the factory sliders as his mount and then he just drilled a hole straight through them and mounted the side brackets to these so they don't slide anymore. Oh, come on! He was a lot shorter than me so when I drove the car it kind of felt like I had a steering wheel in my lap. All that put together just does not make for a comfortable driving experience and honestly it just makes me never want to drive the car. I looked for seats for a little while for this car. I scoured Facebook Marketplace and eBay trying to find something used. I read all sorts of reviews and comments about different companies products. What I wanted was I wanted a pair of seats. I didn't want to do just the driver's side and then still have the old man sedan seat from 1991 in the passenger side. Plus I think a pair of matching seats always just makes the look of the interior look more finished and put together. I didn't want to just get like factory seats from like a Civic or something even though they probably would have been comfortable. I wanted the look of like a racing bucket seat whether reclining or fixed back. I just wanted that look. I wanted something that looked like it belonged in a JDM car and I also had to find a balance of quality but budget and I know that those two things don't usually go together very well in the car world but you can find happy mediums and that's what I was looking for. I didn't have tons of money to spend but I didn't want something that was going to fall apart or would be unsafe to have in the car. I thought about getting a pair of Energy Prismas in the larger size. Uh, I do like a lot of their crazy designs and funky colors, but as I read through comments on their posts, people were complaining about them fading really fast, which makes sense because if you look at that seat that came out of the car, it looks like it's been in the car in the sun for like 10 years and it is like a year and a half old. It is super faded for how not old it is. So I wound up finding these seats from D&D Performance Interior. They were a really good deal. I got them on their Black Friday sale. I don't remember exactly how much I spent but I'll put it on the screen because I have no secrets and no shame. They are not FIA approved but they seem like a good quality seat for the money. I like the diamond stitch pattern which I'll show you here in a minute. They came in a wide variant which seemed like it would work well for me. All I ordered was the seats and I opened the box and they sent me two of these. They have a water bladder in them. These are meant to go on the back of the seat. I thought it was cool that a company appreciates their customers. 
Uh, nowadays, it seems like you can spend a couple thousand dollars and you have a hard time getting some free stickers out of somebody. Next, you'll see a time lapse of me getting them out of the box. I'm going to give you my honest opinions of them, my first impressions. And then I also have sliders from Sparco, uh, mounts and side brackets from Planted Technologies. So hopefully everything bolts together and goes in the car. Um, I'll let you know any snags I hit or tips and tricks I figure out along the way. And hopefully if you're somebody who's looking for a set of seats, this video will help you. And by the end of it, you will know whether to buy these or avoid these. Anything has got to be better than that. Okay. have these completely out of the box and out of the packaging. Uh, I've looked them over really good. I really can't find any flaws in them. Um, the stitching looks really nice. The fact that the diamond stitching in the seat matches up to the diamond stitching in the back, that is a really nice touch. Just extra attention to detail from D&D. &D. Uh, the logo I think looks really nice. Just the white logo on the black fabric. They came really well packaged. They have these protectors on the painted fiberglass on the back. They are pretty comfy. Uh, they are a little bit tighter than I thought they would be, being that they are the wide variant. They're a little bit tighter in my hips and especially in me love handles. But the headrest does feel pretty good and I'm going to be mounting these with side brackets uh, that have different holes in the front and the rear. And so I'm hoping that I can mount the front a little bit higher than the rear. That'll give it a nice slightly reclined seating position because like that it feels really good. You get more support under your legs when you're sitting in the car that way and it just should make for a better seating position in the car. Alright, so that about does it for hanging out in here. Now there's nothing to it but to do it. So. So let's do it! This is just a little bit of a close-up of the planted parts so you can check them out and the Sparco sliders. They are awesome. Everything went together smooth. The only thing I got to figure it out, the mold of the seat uh, comes out right here and doesn't allow this bracket to sit up any higher and I'd like to move this down at least one. Um, so I'm probably going to end up having to trim this off. I just need to be absolutely certain that it won't hit anything underneath if I run it that way. I think I'll be alright. You just don't want to go cutting into something brand new and then have it not work out. So this is cool. This is good thinking by Planted. This is for your factory seatbelt buckle. So they give you a provision to mount the seatbelt buckle, which is pretty cool. All of the holes on the Planet Technology parts are slotted for adjustment. So that was the only kind of challenge is I put everything together and left all the nuts loose and then uh, just figuring out how to get everything centered and keep the sliders from getting kind of all out of whack. I'll try to get some video of putting together the second one. Uh, that way if you're doing a setup like this, you can just watch this and have an idea on how to do it. And any tips and tricks I figure out along the way. One thing to know if you buy D&D Performance Interior Seats is that they do come with side mount hardware already screwed into the seat. So you don't need to order side mount hardware. One extra tip in case you're like me, when you are buying something from a company like Planted uh, and they offer hardware on their website and you don't have any, just buy it. For some reason I always think, oh I don't want to spend the money, I'll find a cheaper option. And then I go to the hardware store and realize for grade 8 stuff to hold down a seat, there's not a cheaper option. I lost an extra couple of days because then I had to wait for hardware to show up from Planted. If you're on a website ordering parts and they offer hardware, just get it. First step is install the side brackets to the seat. Uh, slots go to the front, holes go to the rear. You can go ahead and bolt these to your seat. You can tighten them all the way up. Once you have them on the seat and the angle figured out, there's really no adjustment at all. So you can go ahead and tighten these all the way down and then the rest of the bolts after that you will want to leave loose for adjustment. Alright, so 
side mounts are bolted to the seat and they're tight. Next is the Sparco sliders. I ordered these from Sparco USA. I wanted to make sure I got legit stuff. So next is bolting these to the bottom of the side mounts. These you'll want to leave loose so you can adjust them side to side. These are a little bit of a pain to do. You will bolt in one. You'll have to unlock the latches and slide the sliders to get the other bolt in. So it's a little bit of a pain, but it's not too bad. One other thing on these is they are covered in oil in the package. I wear gloves when I do it. Not only because I like to keep that stuff off my hands, but uh, that way I can wear gloves while I assemble this. And then when it comes time to touch the seat again, I can just pull the gloves off and I'm not worried about getting oil on the nice new seat. This silver tab is the release for the locking mechanism which allows it to slide. You want to make sure that that is on the inside of the seat and that it's pointing forward because this is where your handle hooks on to. You also want to make sure that the movement of it is so that you can pull up on the handle so that it moves toward the seat. When you put these on this is kind of your first area of adjustment. The holes on these Sparco sliders line up perfectly with the holes on the bottom of the planted side brackets. If you're a taller person, you'd want to run them all the way at the front most hole, moving the seat farthest back. If you're a shorter person, the opposite. I'm six feet tall, so I probably should run them in the middle and start there. Um, but when I did the other one, I thought I was a tall person. I guess that's too many years of owning a Miata. So I put them in the tall person position. Uh, so I'm gonna run this one there. I don't think it'll be a problem. I've never had a seat that wouldn't go close enough. Um, so that's where I'm gonna run mine. Uh, you'll have to figure out what's best for you. In my thought process, I figure there's a better chance of somebody really tall someday driving or buying my car as opposed to somebody who's very short. sliders are bolted on loosely. They both move around. At this point make sure that they are even. I lined mine up with the back of them and just made sure that they were on the same click. As you're putting these together I found out on the other seat it's really easy to get like one click off and you'll be trying to figure out why bolts aren't lining up perfectly or why things are sitting cockeyed and it's probably because you're off just one click. Your front holes are already exposed so you can bolt those into the seat bracket. <laughs> Test fitted the seat in the car. Uh, I probably should have recorded some video of it, but I think that'd be kind of boring. And it definitely was too high. So I took it back out. I took the mounts off. I cut them down. did my best to round out the corners a little bit so it doesn't look too unnatural. Um, I actually, for the first time, don't have any black spray paint so I just put a little sharpie on the edge of it to uh, hide the raw metal sticking out. Um, I'm going to bolt it back up to the seat. I'm going to run everything adjusted as close to the transmission tunnel as possible. So the previous owner, he manual swapped this car and he put in a handbrake, a traditional handbrake, instead of a foot pedal emergency brake with the release. Um, so it doesn't have much of a center console. It doesn't have any center console. It has this coming up, the shifter goes here, and then the e-brake just sits here. As you can tell, it's a little crappy. He just cut a notch in it for the handle to fit down in, and I hate it. So this might be a whole different video, but I'm actually gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna make some sort of end plate for it so it doesn't look janky uh, but I'm gonna cut this here and just ditch this because it's it's not serving any purpose but being ugly and then that way with the seats all the way adjusted towards the center it, they won't have anything to hit um, I think that that should work out the passenger side clears the B pillar but it still rubs it as you slide it past it if you if you slide the seat forward the bolster still rubs 
on the B pillar and that'll just cause for faster wear. So I'd like to get them both not touching the B pillar at all. Um, so yeah, uh, no need for this janky thing. All that put together, hopefully it'll give me the room to get them cinched in towards the center. <laughs> Seats are finally in. Um, yeah, it was not too horrible of a process. I did use all the adjustment that I possibly could to get them slid in that way. If you look here, you can see it's still barely touching. Uh, when I first put it in, I couldn't even get the seat all the way forward because it was hitting this so bad. So this bolster's still dragging on that B pillar a little bit. I guess. The seats are wider than I realized, and the car is skinnier than maybe I realized. Uh, I still got a couple little things left to do. This piece here with the trunk and gas lid releases went over the top of the old bracket. You can see right here is hitting on the new bracket. I gotta figure out how to release those cables so I can take this out of the car, and then I'm just gonna take my Dremel and zip this off. Then all that's left is I'm gonna customize that center console and cut that down. Uh, i just run a shorty center console. That should be it for the interior, at least for now. Alright, so the seats are in. Uh, I cut down the side mounts on both sides, so both driver side and passenger side are sitting lower. Currently, they are both still in the slightly reclined position. I drove the car around a little bit today. I sat in the seats for a while. I don't know if I'm going to leave them that way. I might try them level. Honestly, I just don't really want to have to take them back out again and mess with them. So for now, I'm just going to leave them and see how I feel. I might end up changing the recline position. We'll see. I just wanted to give you some of my last like final thoughts. So first, I got a couple notes on the overall install process. Uh, just some things to keep in mind and some tips and tricks. First thing is keep the nuts and bolts loose except for the side brackets to the seats. You can tighten those, but all the other ones I would leave loose. I'd get them close to snug, but make it so you can still move the seat from side to side and then install the seat. I would put in two bolts that bolt the bracket to the car. I'd use two bolts, maybe all four, and then get the seat where you want it side to side. And, and then see if you can tighten the bolts right there in the car. Uh, on mine, I was able to. I was able to do the front uh, and then move the slider and do the rears. Another note is if you use these D&D seats, I would start with them level. I immediately thought after sitting in them on the floor that I would need to make them recline for them to feel good in the car but I think they build those seats with some recline already built into them so I would just bolt them up level with the rear mounts in the corresponding hole to the front mounts. If you're like me and you need to cut your side mounts to get the seat lower, just be absolutely certain that that's what you need to do or that's the route you need to go. I checked with Planted about possibly using a spacer so I wouldn't have to cut their mounts and they said that would not be a good idea. It would put too much stress on the bolt. So he advised cutting the mounts. Once you cut, you can't go back. So just be absolutely certain that that's what you need to do, that the lower seating position is what you need. Uh, when it comes to bolting the seats into the car and bolting the seat bracket to your car, I had to do the rear bolts first and then the front bolts. I had previously tried it doing the front bolts and then it looked like the rears were not gonna line up at all. And so every car might be different. You might have to bolt in the fronts than the rears or you might have to do one side and then the other. If you go to bolt it up and it looks like some of them aren't gonna line up, just try and do certain bolts before the others. There just might be a certain way you have to go about it. Just take your time and whatever you do, don't cross thread the bolt. Um, you really can't afford to cross thread bolts when it comes to putting in seats. You may be able to do it once and tap it out and be all right, but really more than that, you're just running a huge safety risk by messing up the threads that hold your seat down. So just take your time and don't cross thread the bolts. You may have to put some bolts in and wiggle the crap out of it to get the other ones to start. It may take a little bit, but they should bolt up. 
that's my tips and tricks for the installation. Now I'm going to give you my honest thoughts and review of the seats and the hardware. Starting with the D&D Performance seats. So like I said in the beginning, the seats that I got are the Monaco's in the wide variant. I'm a pretty big guy and I fit pretty good in these seats. It is a little bit of a tight fit, but honestly I think that when it comes to spirited driving, I think that these would have a real good feel. I think that you would feel very locked into place and I think that that's where they would really shine. The fit and finish of the seats overall is really nice. The fabric feels great without feeling overly soft and fragile. Um, sometimes seats they feel so soft that they just seem like they're going to rip really fast. Uh, I don't get the feeling with these. All of the stitching looks great. I really like the diamond stitching. I feel like it kind of gives it a high end look. These are also available in red and purple. I think that the logos on the seats look really cool. Uh, I'm stoked that it has them on the front and the rear. I think that's kind of just a nice little touch, a nice little detail that helps the seats pop a little bit. Overall, I think the look of the seats is really nice. They have a higher end look. They look unique without being over the top flashy, which I think is great and will fit lots of different builds. And then my last two pros about these seats are that they are not overplayed. You won't see them everywhere, which I think is cool. And last, they are inexpensive. That is cool to find a set of seats that seems to be quality so far and won't break the bank. I didn't come up with many cons, honestly. One would be that due to their lack of seat cushion, while it may help you sit extra low in the seat, which is nice, I feel like they would get a little uncomfortable when it comes to long drives or extended periods of seat time. I just feel like your butt might get a little bit tired of sitting in them. And then the other one would just be the mold of the seat. It's not a big one, but like you saw earlier, I had to trim down a side bracket to get the seat to sit low. And that's just because of the mold of the seat and the way that it comes out over the top of where the side bracket bolts in. That was a little bit annoying, but maybe that's what they had to do to make the wide variant. And if that's the case, I would gladly trim a bracket to have a wider seat. Next, uh, I guess I'll do the Sparco sliders. And I don't got much. Uh, they work great. It's Sparco. Sparco's been around forever, so I kind of expected nothing less. I kind of expected them to be exactly what they were. They bolted right up. They have no play to them. The latches lock them in solid. They feel great. So next that brings me to the parts from Planted Technologies, which was the seat brackets and the side mounts. They did not list my car in their catalog, they listed a Toyota Cressida, which is basically the USDM variant of my car, um, but I wasn't for sure if it was going to work. I was kind of worried that I might run into issues being right hand drive versus left hand drive. So I emailed them. He got right back to me. He told me if I wanted I could take measurements and pictures and send them to him. So I did that. He went and measured the Cressida brackets that they had in the warehouse, got right back to me. He said, it looks like they should work. Um, you can definitely order them if you want and return them if they don't. So that's exactly what I did. And sure enough, they worked out great. All that to say, I think that great customer service is something that's hard to find these days and Planted Technologies definitely has it in my opinion. Uh, when it comes to their actual products, uh, the first thing that I loved about them was that there was no drilling or heavy modifications to get these to work. The only thing that I had to do was cut down the side bracket and that was because of the seats that they were bolting up to and my choice to want those seats to sit lower. Besides that, the only other thing I had to do was to bend the seatbelt provision a little bit to bolt up the seatbelt buckle, which Planted says in their instructions that that's probably something you might have to do. I was super glad I didn't have to drill any holes to get the sliders to bolt up. That's something else that they say in their instructions that you might run into, but I really did not want to have to get into that. Uh, because then you have to make sure you drill the holes straight otherwise your sliders wind up crooked and they won't function properly. So um, I was super stoked to not have to drill holes and just to have everything bolt up. Um, going back to the seat belt buckle provision, that to me is a pro right there. Just the fact that that is part of their brackets. There's a lot of factory seats that the seat belt buckle is attached to the seat. So then when you replace those with racing seats, you then have to find a way to bolt up the seatbelt buckle. And sometimes it's hard to know what is a safe way to do that. And the fact that they give you a spot right there on their brackets to bolt up the seatbelt buckle, I think is a great touch. 
And then my favorite part about all these planted technology parts is the quality. Everything was just such good quality that I wouldn't hesitate to use them with the best, most high-end, most expensive seats out there. So I think that that makes this setup really cool because someday when you want different seats or you want some really rare JDM seats and you want to get rid of the budget seats that you installed. So many years, such German ingenuity. You already have the brackets and the hardware to install whatever other seats you want. And then for cons when it comes to the planted technology parts, I don't have any. Perfect. Uh, honest truth, I, I couldn't think of any. You know, right now when we're making this video, I think I maybe have 120 subscribers. It's not like I'm sponsored by them or they're paying me to say nice things. I just think that when you find a company making good quality products at good prices, it's important to sing their praises. All right, so that's it for me. I'm super stoked. I'm finally gonna start driving this car because it's no longer uncomfortable to drive. If I end up having any issues with the seats or the hardware, I will definitely make it known. If this video helps you decide what seats to buy or what hardware to use, please let me know. Uh, if you go to install your own seats and this video helps you out in any way with the install process, please leave me a comment and tell me about it. If you have installed seats before and hit some snag that did not get mentioned at all in this video, please tell me about it. I like to hear about other people's horror stories when working on cars. It makes me feel less unlucky. In the meantime, get out there, mod your car, have fun, and stay safe.